Just wanted to leave you a short video recap of some of the points we went through for Julia or Julia Florida by Barrios. Um, so the main things we talked about were rhythm, so things like tempo and rubato, um, slowing down, speeding up, taking time, pushing and pulling, things like that. And um, harmony and the effect that harmony has on the character of the piece. So those are the two main things really, rhythm and harmony. Um, so in terms of rhythm, I think the way you were playing it was, was very strict, which is, which is good, is a good starting point. But this type of, this style of piece I think really does need some movement, ebbing and flowing, because uh, the Barcarolle is a boat song, and um, boats are not very, they're not necessarily a mechanical sort of thing. There's, there's a ebbing and, <coughs> excuse me, an inconsistent ebbing and flowing, like, like the ebbing and flowing of water, it's sort of, it's sort of regular, but at the same time, it's part of nature, and there's a sort of irregularity to it as well. So, um, for example, even at the very start, you could hold up there a little bit. It's almost as though the boat is just starting, about to start its journey. People are getting in and just starting its journey in the water. So. And the melody then comes in, it's just on a simple, so I'm going to talk about harmony now because this affects what we do with the rhythm. So it starts off on a simple D major harmony. Alternating from D to A7, so 1 to 5, very plain harmonies. Before I go on with the harmony, I want to talk about the rhythm, just one thing with the rhythm, which is the re repetition of the dotted crotchet, and then the three quavers that follow. It's like we have stability in the dotted crotchet, and then movement in the quavers going to the stability. So, stability. like that almost for the whole A section it's just the same rhythm um, very good composer to do that I think um, so that's the rhythm now let's talk about harmony so D A7 D in first inversion a little bit more a little bit more tension then we get the A sharp producing a sort of D augmented chord, augmented fifth from D to A, like that, which goes to G, which is a really beautiful movement. Sometimes we think of the relative major and minor as being very similar to one another because they share the same key signature, but in fact they are, they should be like day and night, very polar opposites of each other. So D major is bright, um, triumphant, is how it was described by many theorists in the 19th century, triumphant, joyous, triumphant, um, processional, that sort of thing. I don't think it's quite that character in this piece, but generally along those lines. B minor is like the death of your loved one. It's like the complete opposite. So D major, bright, and then B minor, so lamenting the death of your loved one. Just imagine the... Just a fleeting moment of that. I mean, that's, why, that's how we are as humans. We don't feel... We don't have a feeling for a whole day, one we're happy a whole day, we go through different feelings throughout the day. It's the same with a piece of music. G, or oh, why don't I go back here, D7, G, B minor, E7, here, just this like, all of a 
sudden, like the sun radiates out of the sky, beams out of the sky. <laughs> slow down there it's the end of the phrase so that we can we can hold up a little bit it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be straight up you can hold up a little bit there and then we're back to this Sorry, so D7 to G, high point in the melody, that high B, beautiful moment. F sharp minor, it's described as gloomy, That's a bit, that was a common description of F sharp minor in the 19th century. It's an F sharp minor 7 chord though, so it's got a bit of more colour to it. But again, gloomy. All of a sudden we had this peak, this beautiful, glorious peak. Gloomy. Oh, change, right? It's not always the same. So we go from this gloomy F sharp minor to a E minor 7. So E minor is described as uh, mournful. That's a good, that's a good uh, word. So it's a little bit mournful. Back to the F sharp minor, gloomy, mournful, gloomy, mournful, sort of on the sadder side of things a little bit. Again, it's E minor seven though. So it's, a, it's not. It's a little bit colourful. It's not a string. E minor like that. Then the G. I just want to leave you with that A section, just those things to think about. And I think your task will be to go through the harmony in the B section and think of some similar things. You know, if, if it, is it in minor, is it in major, where is it going? And in terms of rhythm, how does that affect the rhythm? Where can I have points of repose? Where can I push and pull? Where's the tension? Where's the resolution? Um, for example, we have the, the dominant, the tonic and dominant quite a lot in this first section. Dom, uh, sort of dominant resolution. That's the the end, sort of towards the end of the A section there. So that that sort of um, rhythmic movement for that's that's driven by the harmony. So um, have a th have a think and play through the B section and um, have fun with that. And I'll see you next week or next time.